Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Mark Watson from the Winchester Science Centre based in the UK. So the Science Centre has been working over the past few years to make itself more accessible, generally because there's one in five people in the UK have a disability, illness or impairment. So this still continues to be our aim going forward, despite what's happened in the world the last few months. And we're doing this with the aid of various advisory groups to help us. So every decision we make with um, about those whom it might affect, they are consulted and they kind of lead what we do. Last year, 2019, was our first big step with the upgrade of our planetarium system. So I was very happy with that. So when it came down to our accessible technologies, we kind of broke this down into three main parts. We have the structural, the people and the equipment. Simple things like the structural side included things like ramps, lifts, lighting, and in many cases, it's difficult for any facility to make changes to these. Originally, we wanted to install a ramp, but due to our dome tilt, which is only at 10 degrees, the ramp would have been too long in order to be suitable. It had pretty much gone around 70% of our dome. We are fortunate that we do have level access to both the back and at the front of the theatre, including our stage area. So those needing level access were not limited to just sitting at the back. We were able to upgrade our cove lights, making the room a lot brighter. So when people enter and exit the room, they can see where they're going. And we also added strip lights into our steps to help the visually impaired and we found there was a big worry about this, but we did find that this did not compromise on the dome image on the screen. It's an adjustable lighting. It's very similar to what's kind of installed in various theatres or cinemas. And it has worked brilliantly for helping people, even just if they need to come and go during the planetarium show without there being that risk of where the step is. A huge part of every organisation is our people. And we know that people are an important tool. We know a person-led experience is generally better than one completely unguided. We're all here because we love inspiring people. So how can we reach those audiences that would other, otherwise be excluded? So to do that, we've been helping charities to upskill our staff, teach them basic Makaton, sign language, and also just a greater understanding of those with a disability, illness, or impairment. For some learning, a new language is very difficult. But then there were many small things you can do that, that will actually make it a lot easier. All of us find it easier to hear what someone is saying when we can see their lips or read what they're saying. Without it, it is surprising how much of an impact that can have. Though the caption should have hopefully helped. And that brings me on to the final part, equipment. This could be your planetarium system, various handheld electronics, or even tactile resources. We were after a system that would instantly allow us greater accessible features, but also one which we could continue to build on those features, and it would work in partnership with our system. Just gonna say, this is not a vendor session. I'm not going to kind of go into details on that. And a lot of the stuff I am gonna talk about, you can probably have with many other types of systems. So when we, when we did reopen, we started with subtitle showings as part of a regular feature of our listings. We had at least one subtitle showing every single day. And since then that has grown to being almost 50% of our film showings are subtitled. That we do this because this doesn't just benefit the hearing impaired, but it's also great for children to help build language skills. And I've got to really give a thanks here because like vendors for full dome shows have been great at getting me caption files or just scripts over to me. And although I've had to customize it to our system, it was an invaluable resource. So a huge thank you to them. And like, if you do need subtitle scripts, from them for a particular show, I'm sure they'd be willing to get you something. Besides all the positives of like having captions or subtitles, I have always heard, you know, two potential like objections to it. Firstly, the subtitles are distracting. Or 
Two, if I'm reading the subtitles, I can't also be looking around the dome and I miss out on the visuals. So to help with the distracting part, we've put them low down as close to the cove as possible in a semi-transparent area, just to keep them away from the direct dye line. But then that kind of makes it a bit harder if you need to read them and also see the content. So to do that, we actually try and encourage those that need to use the subtitle to sit near the back of the dome. This gives them a greater field of view to see what's going on. And we've generally received positive feedback to this setup. Just on the slide there, I've got a few details of some of the things that we've had to consider when trying to develop our subtitles. Now, we have not found any firm guidelines as to what you have to do. Lots of different places kind of do lots of different things. And we've read through those and we've kind of made up our own kind of guidelines for us that work in line with a lot of what other places are doing. Now, other aspects that we've incorporated are a special additional hearing system. So as with many other systems, we've got an induction loop. This just helps those with kind of, if they've got a hearing aid or a hearing implant, they can tap into the main audio and just hear everything. In addition to this, we have an assistive listening system. You might recognize it. They're very similar to what are used by tour groups. It just allows a select group of people to hear a completely different audio track, either via the personal induction loops that you can see on the right, the supplied headphones we can see on the left of the picture, or people can plug in their own headphones. Now, we're still developing a lot of the audio tracks for these, but it can allow us to play full dome film shows in either multiple languages or with narration only. So then it removes other sound effects and the music just to make it that narration track a lot clearer. Eventually our aim is to have audio description tracks to go along with our sh the shows for the visually impaired and even maybe a simplified language version to help other audience members. They're really simple to use. As you can see, they're generally just using 3.5 millimeter jacks. So it does make it quite nice for people just to kind of grab a hold of and use. And as soon as you plug in your headphones or your hearing loop, the receiver activates and you can start listening to what the transmitter is sending out. Finally, we've been working on some tactiles. This has been done a little bit with the Institute of Cosmology and Gravitation at the University of Portsmouth. So if you haven't heard of what they've been doing, they developed a film called Tactile Universe. And I highly recommend kind of going to that. I'll put a link to their website if you like um, in the chat. Uh, so most of what we make have been just prototypes at the moment. We've 3D printed some of the planets, 3D printed some plates with the, of like Earth features or extraterrestrial features to help complement our presenter-led planetarium shows. Just means those that need that extra bit of information, they can have that. We also find it works on different audience members just to help keep them focused on what's being said, what's being talked about, and helps guide their concentration. Now, considering what's go been going on, we don't know the future of these resources, but we will continue to work on them. And hopefully when people can be using more tactile resources again, we hope to have a larger selection of prototypes or maybe even a finalized set. So where do we go from here? We've made a good start, I think. I mean, we've got a long way to go, but we're gonna keep working at it over the next few years and our plan is to become more and more accessible. We plan to continue developing more subtitle tracks for different films and also improving the ones that we've got. My first run of it certainly is nowhere near as good as the ones I've recently made. So I've been going back and redoing those earlier ones. We want to create more audio tracks for our ALS, that assistive listening system, such as that audio description one. Now for this, we're probably gonna need vendors assistance. And I think this is something I'd like to push for in the future that vendors are kind of producing these, this content for us when we actually purchase a show. There should be some form of accessibility package. We should be pushing to reach these audiences. 
we want to create more tactiles. And finally, my next goal is to try and create live captioning straight to the dome. As you can see, I've got some live captioning going on right now at the bottom of this PowerPoint, but it's not always reliable and finding a way to link it in with our system is the big challenge. If anyone knows any ways in which they've done this and it's worked successfully, I'd love to hear it because that's definitely something we want to do because we want to go more and more live and keep it accessible. So any suggestions, any kind of talks about your experience would be amazing for me. And we have set up or agreed upon having an accessibility breakout during the 840 break. So if you are interested in joining that, please just let us know, probably in the chat, and I'm sure we can kind of sort that out. So that's probably all of my time and then some. So I'm going to hand over to David. We'll keep the PowerPoint running so you still get the subtitles and captions for him. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. You know, that's neat that you're really focusing on what we call UDL, Universal Design for Learning, which kind of brings brings it together for all of our participants in our planetariums. Uh, at Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, somebody asked, where is that? Well, it's in the United States. It's uh, near a city called Erie, Pennsylvania. It's just south of there in uh, a town called Edinburgh. But welcome. And uh, we focus a lot of our attention on the blind and visually impaired. But as Mark was mentioning all those things, what we find is that when we're adapting for one group, we tend to be adapting for many different groups. So making some of these adaptations for our participants in our planetarium is not only benefiting the target audience, but also all of our visitors. So I just wanted to highlight in my few minutes that I have here some of our products. I too, like Mark said, am, I am not a vendor. However, we do offer uh, some tactile materials. And the neat thing is they're produced by NASA. So they're, they're, most of our products are free and accessible. And if you have a particular need, uh, we can hopefully help accommodate that need, pun intended. So some of the books we have uh, out there, if you notice the website there, if you go to survey.nasa.gov slash books slash, uh, you'll find a lot of our products there at that site. And um, basically we've done many different books. One of them is on the earth. That's a new one we're just doing right now. It's kind of the view of earth from space, focusing on satellite imagery of the earth. Uh, so that'll be a tactile book coming here in the next uh, couple of months. We've also done one on small worlds, okay? Small worlds, like different smaller moons, et cetera. Uh, that one's neat because all of our products can be accessed by a QR code on the cover. And that QR code gives you accessible text. It gives you uh, audio files. It gives you everything you need uh, that, you, that enhances the book. And the neat thing we just uh, introduced with the Small Worlds book is we actually have it signed also. So there's a signing, uh, American Sign Language done for the Small Worlds book. Um, we also have a book that's called Getting a Feel for Lunar Craters. We just recently updated that to Getting a Feel for Lunar Craters, the Apollo 50th Commemorative Edition. And we're also starting to branch out for different countries. And so for our friends in South America, of course, you have a very special event coming up in December. And uh, need, uh, of course, the total solar eclipse in December is coming up. And we're excited about that. So I hope you can see this on my screen, but we produced a book on uh, eclipses for South America. And this tactile book, highlights the upcoming solar eclipse in Chile and Argentina. And so we're sending many different copies of that down to Chile and Argentina. Uh, in fact, I'm delivering some to the embassies in DC uh, later this week to go down to um, South America. So even if you're not in the path of totality, you might be interested in those uh, resources because we cover a little bit about all the countries in South America 
uh, in some detail. So that's kind of some neat products. We're also really excited. We just finished a book, a tactile book on Mars. And we just finished a tactile book on uh, our tactile guide or a tactile guide to, of the solar system. So these are all new products that have just come out. Uh, also, just to wrap up here, we also just finished a new product also. We're beta testing it. It's on light pollution. So you might wonder, how do you do a tactile on light pollution? Well, it was kind of a tough, tough chore for us, but we came up with a design. Uh, this doesn't have a cover because this is a new thing, but um, the stars, the brightness are, are um, different sized bumps. And then as you increase in light pollution, you'll notice that you see fewer and fewer stars uh, as you increase in light pollution. So here's Orion in a heavily light polluted area. Okay, so basically that's some, some of the stuff we've done, but like Mark, coming back to what Mark's done, which is universal design for learning that can be implied or applied in the planetarium, we kind of focus on the visually impaired and blind students. But like I said before, uh, anything you can do to enhance the participation of your audience is a good thing. And focusing on one disability is most generally going to help all of your participants. So again, if you're interested in some of our products, you can go to survey.nasa.gov uh, slash books and find more information there. And we'd be happy to uh, talk to you about this in the breakout session. And I think our time is just about up. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Actually, it's uh, about two minutes over, but we have a five minute break always between uh, every two presentations. So it's not a problem. Um, so that means we actually have uh, three minutes left for questions. Um, if there should be any, just post them in the chat. There was one um, that I guess was already answered in the process by Colin Hutchison. What mark, what color of lighting did you finally decide on? Uh, so for the uh, main cove, we settled on a purple for now. We found um, it was a nice color. We have found, like talking with a lot of our group, having the red lighting um, can actually be quite distressing for certain groups. So we are trying to move away from, although it's somewhat standard for in a planetarium to use red lighting as it um, helps with the dark adaption, we're trying to actually move away from that. We know blues may be a bit too bright, so we're trying to find a bit of a medium ground with a nice purple. And that has so far been uh, gone down quite well, but we're still testing out different, different colors. Okay, thank you. And there was one more question that I guess was already, already reacted to in the chat by Mark Webb. Question was, any suggestions for retrofitting existing steps with that edge lighting? And Mark already wrote, uh, um, what was it? Um, well, Mark, do you want to? No, Mark can't. Um, do you want to comment, Mark? Uh, I mean, the other Mark, Mark Watson. <laughs> so uh, uh, we we already had the steps in place. So these were a retrofit. Uh, we contacted a local lighting company that does lights for cinemas, and they installed it into our system. So uh, they did all the wiring they set it up completely within our steps and it just links directly into our part-time system via dmx so it's controlled through our system uh, it can be scripted into buttons and it was a complete retrofit yeah so what mark webb wrote was um, 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 um that it's best to have a knowledgeable carpet installer rather contractor to do the work of running electricity to all the steps. So this is, yeah, it's, it's clear that that has to be done. Well, um, overall, this is a, an absolutely relevant topic. And I think um, perhaps there should be standards on, on all of these things. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is really great and important. We're 